uh, DVDs I'd have to stock up on again when the zombies come I'd just drive through an old blockbuster and steal everything um, but I'm sure I could just hook up a HDMI and watch on Netflix until the internet goes away at which point I'll be really really bored and I'll have to start running people down and again this will probably be one of the best cars to go around shooting people during a zombie apocalypse which I'm sure is coming at the end of this coronavirus <laughs> So I've been at home a lot lately, obviously because of this whole coronavirus thing. You may have heard of it, it's, it's been on some news, but the coverage has been lacking, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, so I've been thinking, if I had to spend 14 days in a car, which one would it be? It's an interesting question. I'll get to it in a second. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe to Jason Hassett, The Car Nerd, on YouTube and uh, check in every day for new uh, videos where I just rant about cars and some days I'm actually in cars. It's just hard to find cars right now because coronavirus. So I want you to comment below what you think um, you would spend 14 days in uh, if you had to live in a car for 14 days during coronavirus and you can comment below on the YouTube or you can comment below if you're looking at this on drivetribe.com and if you haven't checked out drivetribe.com, definitely check it out. It's awesome. It's one of my favorite sites on the web. Tons of cool content about cars, and it's made by Clarkson, Hammond, and May, who are my three favorite uh, car reviewers on the planet. So, if I was to pick a car to live in for 14 days, I first need to set up the rules, because obviously any sane person would pick an RV or a Volkswagen Combi or something along those lines. It can't be purpose-built for camping. That's rule number one. It needs to just be a regular built car. And also it can't be a van or something with a lot of storage space like a pickup truck. It has to be just a normal car with at least five seats in it and no pickup bed. Simple as, it's not a cargo hauler. It's just a regular car. So size limit on this is SUV. Um, that's, that's as big as we're gonna get. Uh, so those are the rules. Um, it doesn't need to specifically be off-road or anything. It doesn't have to go through any challenges. Um, I'm going to go through my five top uh, choices, and you'll see that some of them would be completely useless off-road, um, but I would happily spend 14 days in them. So let me jump straight in at number one. So <clears throat> number one would be a Range Rover Sport lots of reasons for this many obvious many not so Range Rover Sport first of all tons and tons of space like lots and lots of space um, to move around in you, you know you could haul people in it if you wanted to but you know you're quarantining it off also it's got luxury air filters HEPA filters built in like a lot of new luxury cars and a lot of new cars full stop but it will stop 95% of everything so it's the same as wearing a mask as you're driving around the other thing is you could happily put the back seats down and sleep in there with some sheets or to be honest it's big enough that I could uh, you know I'm five foot five I could probably just sleep across the back seat usually uh, the people who buy these get the screens in the back because why not I mean you know if you're gonna spend 120 130 150 thousand euros on a car why not put the screens in the back for when people are trailing about behind you my favorite thing as well is that this is a purebred off-road car so you could definitely take this wherever the hell you wanted so you could just go out into the wilderness and hunt and find fish and everything which is something I've always wanted to do but I'm too nerdy so yeah I can't hunt I'm just useless Number two, and I'm sorry if there's a dog barking in the background, but he's a fucking idiot, and uh, hopefully it doesn't show up in this, so let's continue. Uh, so, next on my list would be, what did I write down here? Let me just consult with this real quick. Oh, next on my list is one that's going to shock you. It's a Ferrari 458. Uh, this is my favorite Ferrari of all time. Um, 
and I'm going to do a video about it later in the week, but the reason I would choose a Ferrari 458 is not for comfort or entertainment because it's a two-seater, uh, so it's going to be quite uncomfortable to sleep in. I'm going to have to learn to sleep sitting up. But I think that if I had to spend 14 days in the car, it would be nice to have one with a 4.4 liter V8 that I could tear down roads. I could go track racing because I assume the tracks would be empty. The roads would be empty to do drag racing. It'll probably be a horribly uncomfortable, sweaty, disgusting 14 days. But I think at the same time, it would be the most fun 14 days ever. And I could take it, you know, in my head, I'd be taking it from Paris to the south of France on the Riviera where there's now nobody and I could just chill out completely racing up and down it going to Monte Carlo and stealing all the money from casinos because that also sounds fun next on my list akin to the last one uh, is essentially a Lamborghini Aventador because it's yet again more power it's a V12 uh, and instead of doing the Riviera trip in that one I would probably do Route 66 um, over 14 days, taking it slow, you know, enjoying it, just rallying down those roads quick as I can. Actually, this is probably the ideal time to beat the gumball, because the gumball was just beaten 27 hours. And because of the lack of people, I could probably do the gum or the cannonball, I mean, should I say cannonball, not gumball. Cannonball race would be quite easy because you could just race along, hopefully see no cops, and the fuel stations would be empty. And I mean, how hard could it be to build, you know, an extra three fuel tanks into a Lamborghini Aventador? I don't think it would be that difficult, would it? Yeah, it'd probably be really difficult. So yeah, I probably wouldn't use that for the cannonball. I'd probably use actually the Range Rover because I'm sure that would happily sit at 120, 130 miles an hour and you could definitely fit enough fuel in there. So yeah. I should do a video on cannonball cars. Tell me below what you'd use for your cannonball car. Car, I'd, I'd be very interested in that. Also, why don't Clarkson, Hammond and May do a cannonball? That would be incredible. Just throwing it out there. If you're watching Hammond, you're not. But if you were, yeah. Okay, next on my list is the Rolls-Royce Phantom. Um, I'm not sure I need to explain why, because I think anyone who... Anyone who knows cars would know exactly why. So the Rolls-Royce Phantom obviously is the high end of luxury cars. I mean, it is the luxury car. Um, you know, obviously they have the new SUV, the Cullinan, um, which probably would have been a better choice for a 14 day stint. But I just hate looking at it because it looks disgusting. Um, and I think that the problem is every time I get out to fuel it or to go to a shop or whatever and someone says, is that your Rolls Royce? I'd be like, no, no, God, no. And then I'd have to walk about four miles and then kind of sneak back in the dead of night because I wouldn't want anyone seeing me in it. It's a lot like um, what they say, you know, it's like a, a scooter, you know, fun to drive, but you wouldn't like to be seen on one. They say that about scooters, definitely not about um, other types of people. Yep. Um, so yeah, the Phantom I would choose because the back seat's fully reclined, you've got all the infotainment, uh, I'm sure I could stream Netflix on it, um, and then they're fun to drive as well because it's a massive uh, V12 or W12, W16, I think you can get the, no it's a V12, I think you can get the W16 in one of the versions if you pay a lot of money, but generally speaking V12, be fun to take around the roads, you could go on a massive road trip, actually that's probably the best cannonball car because it's a V12 but lots of space in the boot to fit to uh, massive things just like Ed Bolian did um, when they went on their cannonball in 28 hours which was recently beaten. If you haven't checked them out, definitely check out VinWiki Stories or Car Stories is one of my favorite channels. But yeah, I would definitely definitely consider the Rolls Royce Phantom as one of the best cars to spend 14 days in, um, just because of the comfort level. I mean, it's designed to drive you around all day. It's it's designed almost to live in, and the best thing is it has ashtrays for your cigars. And when the zombies inevitably come and there's no people or police around anymore, I could just steal a ton of cigars and just fly around in my Phantom, running over um, the impoverished, which is something I've always wanted to do. Uh, that and shoot a pheasant um, from the back of my Range Rover out the window with a shotgun. Um, and also afford a Range Rover would be great as well. So don't forget to subscribe so I can eventually afford one. Uh, number five on my list Oh yeah, of course. Uh, number five on my list is a 2020 Chevrolet Suburban. 
Um, and the reason for this is obvious. It, it might as well be a camper van. The thing is massive. So you've got uh, space for seven people, but if you were to fold those down, you could easily just fit a bed in there. You know, it's not purpose built for that, but you could easily fit a mattress in the back of this thing. It's essentially a Silverado, and I know I'm probably breaking my own rules slightly with this one, but it's technically no bigger than an SUV. It's not a van, it's not a pickup. It is a car with five seats, so it's well within the rule house. And that is the one I would probably choose purely on the basis that the amount of space at the back, it's got televisions, DVD uh, player, uh, DVDs I'd have to stock up on again when the zombies come, I just drive through an old blockbuster and steal everything. Um, but I'm sure I could just hook up a HDMI and watch on Netflix until the internet goes away, at which point I'll be really, really bored and I'll have to start running people down. And again, this will probably be one of the best cars to go around shooting people during a zombie apocalypse, which I'm sure is coming at the end of this coronavirus. So, yeah, essentially, um, the Suburban would probably be a great one. And if I had to choose one and one only from my list of five, would probably be the Suburban because I'm sure it would go off road not as well as the Range Rover but I could probably take it into places like the same you know out into the wilderness it's they're kind of built for that you can get a four-wheel drive it's got the massive engines giving up things it has locking diffs so yeah I could probably get that to, to drive off road um, but I would choose it purely on the basis that I could go buy a mattress put the mattress in the back hook the TVs up and essentially turn it into a camper van therefore ruining all of my rules this entire video and wasting about 13 minutes of your time so yeah uh, that's what I would probably choose and those are my top five please let me know in the comments which ones you would choose and let me know in the uh, comments on drive tribe as well uh, and support drive tribe those guys are class seriously they're amazing um, thank you for watching I will see you again tomorrow where I'll be chatting about my favorite Ferrari the 458 and possibly on Friday where I'll be talking to you about the uh, Dodge Ram which I'm hopefully going to be driving tomorrow or Friday and doing a quick video of um, this thing is tuned up to bits it's the original 5.7 liter Hemi but it's been tweaked and it goes like hellfire um, and hopefully I don't catch coronavirus on that outbreak so stay safe guys stay home and uh, yeah, let's let's all survive this. Thank you for watching. Have you have you liked and subscribed yet? Have you, have you done it yet? No? Still nothing. How about now?